Her quads are better than her triples. Hi everyone, my name is Eric. I am a former competitive figure skater and this is my figure skating reaction series. For those of you who don't know me, I am a five-time U.S. National Championships competitor through the senior level. I trained for about 15 years in the Chicagoland area with top coaches, including most recently Olympic coach Denise Myers. So long story short, I know my stuff. Let's get started. This video has been a long time coming by extremely popular request. And after the Olympic team event women's short program, I realized that I need to make it now. Camilla Valieva is arguably the best overall women's figure skater in the world right now. She's the favorite to win the gold in the individual event at the Beijing Olympics that's going on right now. And she's already won the short program uh, in the team event women's short program. I think Camilla is absolutely incredible. However, we need to talk about her jumps. All right, so let's get into what everyone is most curious and talking about right now, which is her triple flip and triple lutz jumps and the question of pre-rotation. Let's break it down. Here we go. Okay, so here Camilla is going into her triple flip at the Olympic team women's short program event. First thing to know about pre-rotation is that it can actually be very hard to spot. So if we just really quickly play this clip in real time, like, you can't just spot it immediately, really, I would say. Like, I personally never really um, saw these things until they were slowed down for me. Um, so that's the first thing to note. One sec. Okay, I've rewinded it, and now we're going to go uh, more in slow motion and kind of a little bit frame by frame here. So Camilla gets great speed, and she does her mohawk into the flip. And you see that she picks right here, right? Um, so what we'd want to see in general on a flip and lutz jump is to leave pretty soon after you pick off the ice. So maybe within like a quarter rotation or definitely before the half rotation mark, um, you should already be in the air and doing the rotation. Obviously, or not maybe, sorry, it's not obvious, but you need some sort of uh, pre-rotation a little bit to just get off the ice pretty much. It's not possible to do like absolutely zero pre-rotation, but uh, minimizing it is just kind of better. Otherwise, you're just turning on the ice and not in the air, um, which is what you need to do in a jump. So if we go frame by frame, look at her right toe right here. It's stuck in the ice. That's about the quarter mark. That's about the halfway mark right there. She's still not up yet. She gets up, I would say, right there. So her toe is touching there, right? And then she gets up into the air. So right there, um, it's, a, it's a little bit, it's slightly blurry, but if you look at, uh, it's not the best, best angle, but if you look at her right um, kind of knee and also uh, relative to the left knee and the position her body is facing in relative to when she first started, that's like, over the half mark, halfway mark for sure, and nearing the three quarters mark, I would say. So she rotates onto the ice almost three quarters of a rotation before actually taking off and doing the jump. Also, by the way, Camilla does something that I like to call like the windmill arm, where look at her right arm is so high right now, her left arm's kind of down. And this is also because she's kind of going into um, having both her arms over her head when she jumps, but she kind of does this windmill arm that I do think, uh, I think it helps make her consistent, and I think it also kind of feeds into the pre-rotation um, because it allows you to kind of like keep staying on the ice before really jumping up. Um, whereas if you look at other techniques for doing like flip and lutzes, let's just say like Nathan Chen or Yuzuru Hanyu, um, I, I've taken a look at both of theirs, they don't have that as much pre-rotation. Um, actually, maybe I can give a little bit of an example. Okay, so here Nathan Chen is going into his quadruple flip jump, uh, also in the team event uh, at this Beijing Olympics. Uh, short program. So we see here he's taking off from a three turn. That's totally fine. Three turn mohawks are both okay here. So look, he picks into the ice right there. Okay, watch the positioning of his right foot. And he turns in the ice a bit. Uh, and then he gets off right there though. 
So I think that's almost at the quarter mark. And then he's up in the air definitely by the time he's uh, halfway into the air. So it's definitely under a halfway uh, of a, uh, a pre-rotation before he lands his quadruple flip jump here. Okay, so now we're going to move into Yuzuru Hanyu. Oh my god, guys. I actually just found this example and I didn't realize how insane Yuzuru Hanyu is. Obviously, he's the GOAT or whatever, but he doesn't pre-rotate almost at all, guys. And this is a left jump. I know it's been from a flip, but it's very similar uh, idea. And uh, I think I'm going to show you Camilla's LUTs next anyways. Anyway, it's very similar. Um, guys, look at this. He's a perfect outside edge, obviously. Look at his right foot right here. It's completely straight he already leaves the ice guys look at this look at this he leaves the ice right at the takeoff he doesn't do any pre-rotation and it's a quad lutz from that guys this is actually insane i feel like this is not even normal <laughs> like usually a little bit of pre-rotation is fine and like necessary he literally leaves the ice um as he goes into this quad jump and just so that people don't think I'm like uh, faking this swing, I'm gonna show the entire jump so that we can <laughs> see him landing it. But guys, that is actually uh, really insane and extremely impressive. So uh, for all those fan news out there, this is what you should be pointing at is like the best technique that like I don't think many other people can possibly do. So anyways, that's perfect. Uh, let's jump with zero pre-rotation pretty much. Let's go on. And a lot of her blade is on the ice, which is already a little bit of a red flag, and that contributes, often uh, can be like a, another symptom of pre-rotation. Some people call it the full blade assist or something like that. Um, but again, her blade turns uh, like three quarters of a rotation right there. So again, she picks right there, a little bit blurry, but she's going back, picks right there. She turns, 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 turns. There's half, there's more than half. There's three quarters. And right after that is when she actually takes off. So she's in the air at almost the three quarters mark. So again, pre-rotating a bunch on the ice before actually uh, do, uh, going up into the air to do the jump. It's kind of confusing, but basically right now, the ISU does not really punish uh, skaters for pre-rotating jumps except for the kind of toe axle jump instead of doing a toe loop you do like a toe and then an axle um, so besides that it's not really being punished so if we go and look at the graded execution criteria which helps you get extra points on a, a good jump there's basically six bullet points that can get you goe on a, a good jump a positive goe However, for um, plus four and plus five, the highest GOE marks, the first three bullets uh, that are highlighted in bold here have to be present. So I would say that Camilla's triple flip and triple S are, you know, pretty similar. So I guess these, these both, kind of my analysis for both would apply, but let's just, I guess, uh, talk about the triple flip. Um, in terms of height and length, I think it has perfectly fine length. I don't think it's necessarily the highest jump I've seen. I think I've seen much bigger triple flips, technically. Um, and so I don't, I don't think I would potentially quite give it that. Number two, good takeoff and landing. She has a great landing. Takeoff, because of the pre-rotation, I do think that that should be taken in, into consideration. I'm not exactly sure if they do right now, but I wouldn't say it's the best takeoff. So I think at least in terms of GOE, that should be um, not given. Effortless throughout, definitely. Steps before the jump, creative entry, sh yes, sure. Very good body position, um, yes. Um, I guess besides the foot position on takeoff, but I guess that's that doesn't that's fine. The body position is great, and then element matches the music, yes, sure, great. So the problem is though is that I don't I think it's a little bit questionable if she has. The first bullet, um, and then if we really take pre-rotation into consideration for the second one, then she really should not be getting any plus fours or plus fives um, on her jumps. But let's take a look at what she did get on her triple flip jump uh, with Olympic uh, team short program. She got a plus five from three of the uh, nine judges and a plus four from another three and then a plus three from the remaining three. So six of the judges um, did not think that um, the, the height was any kind of issue, which I guess maybe that's okay. 
and really definitely though did not take pre-rotation into consideration for a good takeoff um which again um you know they don't have also like that that much time right so if a jump looks good they're not going to slow motion the takeoff just for goe i'm pretty sure they do not do that so it's not the most surprising thing um, but again, I do think that this should be a factor in a good takeoff. I think many people do believe that. Um, it's also just a factor in a good rotation and a good jump. Um, and so she probably should be receiving a little bit less GOE than she is. Um, but also, obviously, in this case, I, I think pretty obviously, even if the rules were changed a little bit, or even if this was taken into consideration, she would still be winning by a landslide. Pre-rotation should obviously count as um, a good takeoff to not pre-rotate too much or excessively, especially on these kinds of jumps that could be prone to that where it doesn't need to happen. So I feel like regardless, um, the GOE should be a bit lower. I wanted to mention that um, I, I, I feel like, I'm, I'm sure that Camilla could or is physically able to perform these jumps kind of with proper technique, so to speak. I mean, she can literally do quadruple jumps. I'm sure she could do some of these triples, you know what I mean, like without pre-rotation. However, I think it's more a matter of the fact that she and other skaters are not being punished for the pre-rotation or like the bad-ish technique. And it's allowed her or helped her to be consistent. And so she's used to it now. So again, kind of as always, it's not really, it's, it's not Camilla's fault at all. Um, I mean, with technique, you could like argue that it's, you know, a little bit of a responsibility from her coaches, but really it's actually the responsibility of the judges and the judging system as always, because skaters, if they're doing something and it works for them and they're not getting kind of punished for it or dinged on it in terms of GOE, in terms of base value, in terms of all these things, then why should they change? You know, why should we even expect them to change? I do think that going forward, because this has kind of been blowing up as a bigger and bigger issue and with, you know, uh, everyone doing more quads and things like that, I do think that we should be more critical of pre-rotation going forward and that kind of these governing bodies should be doing something about that. However, I do not think we should play, uh, place any blame on the skaters and really should be um, kind of putting more pressure onto the governing bodies such as the ISU for fixing these things how we judge these things. I wanted to really quickly, by the way, mention Camilla Valieva's um, kind of triple toe loop jump combos. Camilla does do what some people, I guess, kind of call a mini kind of power pull in between the jumps. You can kind of see her, you know, preparing again before she goes to the triple toe loop. For example, on her triple S triple toe in the short program. And I do think that this makes her combo jumps, uh, her toe combo jumps kind of more rhythmic and more easy to be consistent for her. And I guess people have been saying, arguably that means that there's a loss of kind of flow and rhythm in between jumps, which is one of the uh, kind of factors that could be considered within GOE. By the way, GOE means grade of execution for those who don't know. So it could get like a reduction of between minus one to minus three in um, GOE. But I don't know guys, I find that's less of a big deal to me you could even argue that that makes it rhythmic. I mean, I guess depends on what you mean by rhythm, um, kind of in between jumps and all of that. I don't know, I guess it's a little bit debatable. I think that's less of an important one. Um, it is again, a interesting new kind of newer, I feel like technique that people are doing to make themselves uh, get those consistent jumps. Um, but like, you know, if it works, it works, I guess for now. Okay, but. I know that people are talking a lot about the negatives and the, and the pre-rotation and all this stuff, um, but I hope it doesn't kind of overlook what's actually really important is that Camilla Valieva is an amazing jumper. She really is the shining star in the women's field right now that can, at least this year, perform cons kind of those ultra C, ultra hard, ultra C elements consistently. So the triple axle and the quadruple jumps. Uh, for her, she does the quadruple sow cow and toe loop uh, in free skates. Which, by the way, um, I guess maybe I could do a, a more of a deeper dive into her quad jumps in a different video. I thought that I wouldn't focus as much on it in this video. But her quad jumps um, pretty much have like perfect technique. Um, not in the sense that, you know, it couldn't be like any better or whatever, but just in the sense that there's nothing to really ding 
Um, as far as I can see right now, kind of technically a ding in terms of the jumps, you know, base value and execution and creative execution, all of that. There's nothing to really ding on her triple axel or quad jumps. Now, again, I don't think that means that they're perfect. For example, her triple axel in terms of the technique itself, um, you know, arguably with the, having the hand in front and, and doing it that way, like, isn't necessarily like the best technique. I don't know, but you know what? Like she's been proving everyone wrong. Like she's been doing it consistently this year more than anyone else with different or, you know, both arm technique or whatever. So I don't know, she's making it work. So I think that it's, it's fine and it's getting her that step, you know, closer to Olympic gold and all of that. Um, and so, yeah, those jumps are really good. Congratulations, Camilla, for being such an amazing, consistent skater this season. Really happy for you. Okay, that's pretty much all I have today. Um, I'll try to maybe make some more videos kind of similar to this uh, or a little bit different for some of the other top uh, Olympic contenders. Um, let me know what more you want to see below and all of that. Hope you enjoy. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on that notification bell. See you next time!